Hello everybody, Daniel from Space Doc here, and before we start on this week's episode, just a quick message to fans of our original science fiction audio drama, The Sojourn. Our official merchandise store on The Sojourn website has now opened. There's a link in the description where you can grab a variety of awesome Sojourn merch items. We've got the Privateer Hollow Star baseball caps and Guinevere ceramic mugs and a variety of hoodies and stickers and various other goodies. We currently have a limited time 20% discount going on. You just have to use the code DRIFTGATE20, that's in block capitals, Driftgate 20. All revenue from purchases goes back into the budget of the Sojourn, helps us produce future volumes and hopefully future seasons. So please do consider checking it out with the link in the description, we've got some awesome stuff on there. Hello everybody, Daniel from Space Doc here. Now I've seen a lot of people online in the last few years who have questioned why the spore drive was never dug up as a means of rescuing the USS Voyager in the 2370s. Obviously the meta reason is that the spore drive concept hadn't been invented in Star Trek yet, but just for fun, let's try and think why this wouldn't have been done in universe. I think we have enough information given to us in Discovery to provide quite a satisfying explanation for this. Now the first point of course is that in the 2370s they don't have a spore drive, so they would have to build a new one, and they would have to do this without the assistance of its original two designers, who are both presumably dead by this point, one of them's definitely dead, and the other one, if he is dead, is in 900 years into the future, and they don't have access to any of the original hardware, and most importantly, they don't have any of the necessary documentation or designs because they were all classified and possibly destroyed in order to keep them out of the hands of Section 31. But if we assume they somehow overcame all of this and built a spore drive in the 2370s, they've still got further problems. For one thing, you need a navigator to use with the spore drive, and using the spore drive without a navigator is first of all quite short range, relatively speaking, not very accurate, and extremely dangerous. So there's no way it could be effectively used for a 70,000 light year rescue mission without a navigator. Now we know that the options they have for a navigator are either a macroscopic tardigrade native to the mycelial network, or a person transfused with the DNA of a macroscopic tardigrade native to the mycelial network. Now I'm going to assume they don't have any tardigrade DNA on hand that's been preserved for all of this time. It would probably have been destroyed with the rest of the data. But even if they did have some, modifying a person with it would require breaking the eugenics treaties governing genetic modification, which the Federation is very, very serious about and will go to tremendous lengths to avoid breaking. The tardigrade option requires the mistreatment of an animal, which is again something the Federation frowns on, but it could be argued that they would be more willing to overstep this boundary to rescue Voyager's crew than they would be to overstep the genetics one. So let's assume they go for the tardigrade path. Now, acquiring a macroscopic tardigrade from the mycelial network may not be possible at all. The way the first one was acquired was that the USS Glenn attempted to do a spore jump with no navigator, and while they did enter the mycelial network, there was a horrible failure and the entire crew was killed and as a coincidental result of this, a tardigrade appeared on board their ship. Now it might be literally impossible to recreate this scenario, and even if they could, it would require significant loss of life and a great deal of risk just to maybe acquire this creature. And even if they did acquire the tardigrade, we've seen that the jumps performed with the tardigrade on board as the navigator are less accurate, less controllable, less reliable than an increasingly experienced human navigator like Stamets was. Even if they got everything working, they would then need to travel 70,000 light years there and then 70,000 light years back. The farthest we've ever seen the spore jump go is 50 something thousand light years to Terralisium. Now it's entirely possible that it can go the entire 70,000 light years at once, or they could be able to go there in a series of hops, but in order to do that they would need a significant supply of the Prototaxitus Stellaviatori spores that are used in the spore drive which are also extremely rare and probably much more rare in the 24th century as there hasn't been any reason for the Federation to deliberately grow them anymore. And also again, they might have been destroyed as part of the purging of all of the materials and data related to the project. Also worth mentioning here is that a sentient race of creatures called the Jarsep were discovered within the mycelial network and it's eventually found that use of the spore drive is damaging the ecosystem that these creatures live within inside the mycelial network and may also be damaging that ecosystem for other potential creatures that live inside the network, which is another ethical reason for the Federation not to begin employing it again. And also we know that in the Mirror Universe, the Terran Empire was experimenting with super mycelial reactors that basically had this damaging effect on the mycelial network in a much greater way than the spore drive alone does. And since the mycelial network exists across the multiverse, 
and is affected by both the Mirror Universe and the Prime Universe and any other potential universes, it's entirely possible that at some point the Terran Empire actually destroyed the Mycelial Network by attempting this again, and maybe the network itself doesn't even exist in the 2370s. It's worth pointing out that there are some holes in this, because, you know, many worlds theory, if it is possible to have destroyed the Mycelial Network, then conditionally at least one timeline must have destroyed it, and if they have destroyed it and destroying it takes place across the entire multiverse, then it wouldn't exist anywhere. So really doesn't make sense if you think about it too much. Oh, can I go on a fun tangent here? There's an episode of Doctor Who, right, where the Daleks build something called a reality bomb, which essentially destroys all possible universes. And naturally, of course, the Doctor stops it and everything never gets set off. But if this bomb destroys all possible universes, and there is a universe for every possible outcome, then there must be a great many universes in which the bomb went off, and in those universes, the bomb would have destroyed all universes, including the universes where it didn't go off, which of course includes the one the show takes place in. So, QED, the bomb cannot work, ever. So he didn't even need to save the day. If they'd have tried to use it, it just would have broken. And by the same measure, this weird mycelial network being destroyed by reactors from the Terran Empire explanation doesn't necessarily hold water. But anyway, final point is that since this is a Section 31 cover-up thing, it's entirely possible that nobody involved with Project Pathfinder, nobody in the entire hierarchy of Starfleet Command, apart from the very top brass, even knew that the spore drive had ever existed in the 2370s. So I think the available options are either that it was never mentioned because nobody knew about it, or it was brought up and passed across the desk of Project Pathfinder as a potential option to explore, and they just decided that there were so many risks involved, so many miraculous scenarios that would need to be recreated, so many ethical and legal boundaries that would need to be crossed, that it wasn't really worth exploring. This isn't the only time in Star Trek we've seen a miraculous, powerful drive system be basically abandoned for safety reasons and never recreated. The Federation seems understandably hesitant to mess with that kind of technology, after it's proven to cause serious problems in the past. And while I'm sure Project Pathfinder was a serious and important project for the Federation Starfleet, they probably had a lot of resources thrown behind it. I'm not sure if it's something that would single-handedly prompt the total reinvention of propulsion within the Federation and the spawning of an entirely new drive system or other system for rescuing them. Stuff like that would already have been explored for its own exploratory value by various research institutes, rather than specifically for the purpose of rescuing this one ship. So there you go, that's why they wouldn't use the spore drive, because it would require a lot of time, a lot of work, a lot of dead people, and a lot of mushrooms. Thank you for listening, this is Daniel from Space Doc, signing off. Thank you for watching Space Doc. If you're interested in supporting the channel, please do check out the links on the screen right now or in the description below for our Patreon and channel membership services. Anything you can pledge goes towards improving our team and our equipment and allowing us to put together bigger and more exciting video projects for you guys on the channel.